Today we're going to be building the Carpenter's Toolbox. Hi everyone, my name is John and thank you so much for joining me. Today we are going to be building the Carpenter's Toolbox. Feel free to follow along and pause, rewind, or even skip parts as needed. All the different steps are split into chapters found in the video timeline. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment to talk about the importance of safety. When we work with or around tools, we need to be very careful to show respect for potential hazards and take our work very seriously. Safety glasses must be worn. You only get two eyes and these will help to make sure that you get to keep them. Building stuff is fun, but if you get hurt, the fun is over. Please have fun, but take safety seriously. Okay, let's quickly talk about the tools you'll need to complete this project. The first thing we're gonna need is our safety glasses, so let's get those. You'll definitely need a hammer. It's hard to hit nails without a hammer. You will also need some glue. Glue is what's gonna help keep our project together. I also like to have a popsicle stick to help spread my glue. You can use a brush or even just spread it with your finger. And finally, I like to be able to put my glue onto a paper towel before I spread it onto my wood. Just makes things a little bit easier. Okay, let's get some glue ready for this project. Glue is actually what helps to keep your project together for the long term. The nails are only there just to hold your project together until the glue dries. The, the glue is what creates the strongest connection. Okay, for our first step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of our sides and we're gonna attach that side into our bottom or our base. Before we do that, let's talk about a special kind of, kind of a joint that we have here. This cutout right here is a cutout called a dado cut. When I take that cut and I place my base inside of it, it creates a specialty wood joint called a dado joint. So what we'll do now is we're going to put these two together. All we need is some glue. We're not going to nail this side on. We're just going to get some glue inside the dado cut and then we'll move on to step two. But let's get some glue in there first. When we're putting our glue on, we want to make sure that we spread our glue evenly inside of our joint. And we want to make sure that our glue is making contact with, with all of the parts of the wood that will make contact with the other piece that will be joined to it. Doing this will create the strongest connection. Okay, I've got my glue in. Let's go ahead. We're gonna create our first dado joint. Put them together like that. And now for step two, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab one of our lower slats. And you'll notice that there is also a cutout running through it. This is a dado cut, just like down on that side piece. But also, you'll see that there are two cuts on the ends. These two cuts also have a special name. The name is cheek. These cheeks, when put together, overlapping the edge of this side, create another specialty joint called a rabbit joint. Okay, let's get some glue in this and then we can get it attached. I'm just gonna grab some glue and I'm going to run it, just a nice thin line, run it all the way through the middle of that dado cut because it's quite a lot of glue to get on there. And then I can kind of spread it out as I need. Let me just hold this up here to make sure I know where it's going, okay? Yeah. And so this side is gonna get a little bit of glue. That cheek there is gonna get a little bit of glue so that when it makes contact with the edge of our side, we have glue on it. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna go ahead, get that placed on there, creating our rabbit joint. Grab some nails. You'll notice that there are pre-drilled holes in each of these uh, uh, pieces. These pre-drilled holes do a couple of things. One, they save our fingers, 
but they also allow us to know exactly where we need to put those nails. So we create a, a quality project. Now, one thing I'm gonna do before I continue nailing is I'm gonna talk about dealing with a bent nail. Dealing with a bent nail can be kind of frustrating. What happens is you, you, you start to bend the nail and you have trouble getting it in straight and sometimes you get really excited and you smash away until that nail is just making a mess of your wood. The best thing that you can do in that case is to slow down. Slow down, pull that nail out and get a fresh nail. That way your, your project will look good and you won't have to deal with that level of frustration. So let me show you how I, I'm gonna deal with this. First, let's bend this nail over. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my hammer. This is a special kind of hammer. It's actually called a claw hammer. The back of this hammer is called the claw. And if we take our claw and place the nail in between the two claws there, carefully roll the, the hammer forward and whoa, that came out really easily. And that's it, that's all you need to do. We can take the nail out, grab a new one, and then we're off to the races, we're good again. So here's our other side. We're gonna do the same thing. Let's go ahead and get some glue inside that dado cut. All right, uh, I've got enough glue in there. I'll go ahead and, so, oh, gotta be careful. We need a little glue right here on that cheek. We wanna remember to do that. All right, there we go. Now we can go ahead and put that in there. Okay. Want to make sure that our cheeks fully overlap the edges of the sides to make sure that we have a nice fitting project and that will create a very strong rabbit joint. Okay, I'll go ahead and get my, my nails in these holes here. And one more nail here. Good. Okay, we've got a lower slat on, we've got our base connected, we've got our two sides connected. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our handle in a position. This dowel right here is actually our handle. It's going to fit loose, we don't, don't need to put any glue on it, that way it can turn as we carry it. In order to put this in, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to slide it inside one of the holes, and we have to be careful when we do this because we don't wanna tear apart our project to get it in. We have to very carefully stretch the sides out and they may come out of place a little bit and that's okay. We're gonna put them right back and then boom, there we go, in place. We can squeeze them back, make sure our joints are tight and they are. And now we've got our handle installed and we can continue building the project. Okay, let's get our upper slat on this side installed. The upper slat has no cutout running through it, but it does have the cheeks on either side. So I'm gonna get some glue on this. There we go. A little bit of glue on the other side. When we install this upper slat, it goes in a very specific position. When you look at the side of the toolbox here, you'll notice that the toolbox uh, side runs straight up and then it changes direction and it comes in like this. The point at where it changes direction, we're gonna call it the shoulder. Whether it's called that or not, that's what we're gonna call it. We're gonna call that part right there, the shoulder. So the reason why you wanna know that is because it helps us to know exactly where that upper slide is gonna go. So if I put my project down here, and then I take my upper slat and I align the top of the upper slat to be at the point where that shoulder is, we'll have our slat in the right position. It should also have a nice parallel gap between the two slats. I can put a couple nails in there. We'll get one nail on this side. Good. Put 
flip that around. We've got our two slots on one side. Now we can put the two slots on the other side. All right. So let's grab our lower slot first. And that lower slot includes the dado cut. I'm gonna get my nice line of glue right down the middle here. You don't have to put too much in there, right? Just enough to be able to move it around and you can always add more, right? Sometimes if you put too much in there, it's hard to, it's hard to get it out without making a mess. All right, now I'll get the cheeks. One. All right, there's the other one. Okay, let's install that lower slat in its place. Beautiful. We'll get our nails in. And two more nails. Okay, now that we have our lower slat on this side, we can go ahead and install our upper slat. And we know what we need to do here. We just get some glue on these cheeks. Okay, I'm gonna line up my slot with the shoulders of the sides. There we go. Turn that around and get the last two nails in. All four slats are on. We got our handle in, our sides are on, and our bottom. There we go. We put together our toolbox. Now what we're gonna do is we need to wait about an hour for the toolbox itself to dry and get everything nice and, and, and solid. And then we can come back and sand all the imperfections out, sand out all the rough edges. Okay, so it's been about an hour and our toolbox is nicely dried. And what we can do is sand out all our imperfections and, and uh, rough edges and things like that. But before I do that, I just, I'd like to talk a little bit about wood grain. See all these lines that are running through that, that slot right there? Those lines are actually called grain. When we use sandpaper, it creates scratches in the wood. If we sand in the same direction of the grain, we actually hide those scratches very well. And it looks very nice. Now, if I take my sandpaper and I sand in the opposite direction of the grain, what we'll do is actually be very obvious that there are scratches in that wood. Okay, so how about I'll sand my project and you sand your project. And when we're all finished, we'll see how we did. The toolbox looks great. From everyone at Build It Yourself Woodworking, thank you so much for spending time with me to build your kit.
If you enjoyed building this kit or know somebody else that may enjoy building a woodworking kit too, then go to www.buildityourself.ca to see all of our great woodworking kits.